blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Every living thing, two of every sort shall you bring into the ark, male and female. Four. Save them from the coming Three. Armageddon. All the wild two. beasts shall be in your keeping. One. Two of every species from the beginning of time.
your hand Met the universe And everything within Your touch Gives us life and more
اصلی رفت sit down ask you to do something for me maybe you are not too used to it but as a young preacher a few years ago I read a merry heart worketh like medicine may I ask you to laugh for somebody to receive a blessing laugh for somebody just laugh let it come from your heart hallelujah just laugh laugh Hallelujah, laugh. Then give Jesus a hand. Amen. 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 Stretch your hand this way. Dr. Benny, come here. Dr. Isaiah, come here. Dr. Bolden, come here. And I want all you ministers at the stage here with us to come with me. I do not take this life lightly. This gift God has given to us as a gift to our generation needs your daily prayers. Thank you, Lord. The reason I believe God is using Benny Hinn the way he's doing is that he hasn't allowed pride to take over his life. He cares for the sheep and he cares for world evangelization. Will you stretch your hand towards me? Thank you, Jesus. As we pray for this gift. Thank you, Jesus. Only you can lift. Only you can lift. Thank you, Jesus. Only you lift at your own chosen time. You lifted this one for us. You gave him to your church on earth to lift your name, to bless the poor, to raise the downtrodden, to heal the sick. Now we surround him with the power from on high. He will be far from the bullets of the enemy. Yes, Lord. Yes. From the arrows of the wicked. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We seal him in your pavilion. Yes, Lord. And refuse to give this land to the enemy. Yes. In Jesus' name. He has been yours. He is yours. Yes. And forever he shall be yours. Yes, Lord. Amen. So be it and so shall it be. We put him in your vault that has no spare key. Yes, Jesus. And no enemy shall get there. In Jesus' name. So be it. So be it. Amen. So be it, and so shall it be, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your hand together for Jesus. Thank you. Be seated. Because you are in a Bible-believing church, and because you are in a miracle practicing church you are in a church where God is not the God that used to be I hope you are hearing me you are in a church tonight where God is not the God that used to be he is the God that is the same yesterday today and forever somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah few places on earth i get to and god gives me revelation and anointing i said so not too long ago in miami that there are few pulpits when you stand the lord can tell you I'm with you there. 
You don't preach to please man. You preach toward Christ. For the years, God has given me opportunity to come here. Through his servant here. Whom we have known for years. Whenever I stand here, God gives me unusual message. Tonight, I do not want to preach what Benahim preaches. What someone else preaches. I want to preach what God has given me for you as his own child. Don't come to this church and miss your timing. Are you hearing me? What you saw in Arkansas, you see it here. But don't be a spectator. Be a participator. I told Dr. Benny here when this girl was singing on the film we watched. God took her from victim to victor. Do you look at the lives of the people that are her parents? That there's no reason for those people to be her parents. But when God gives you a destiny, no man can utter it. That girl will do what God has said she will do. Somebody say amen. amen. Because we live in a world of daily trials. Temptations and frequent bullets. I have to daily be on my knees to ask God how to live, how to overcome. Because the worst thing about life, or the most exciting thing about life, if not the worst, is that life is a daily thing. When you are in pain, you wish you die. When you need death, it doesn't come. It's when you don't want to die, you die. When you have joy, you don't want it to end. And as soon as you say, oh, this joy, I don't want it to end, then it stops. And because of that, this book called the Bible, should become your friend in season and out of season. May I hear you say amen? amen. I preached a message not too long ago on how when you are confronted with war, you didn't invite to come to you. And you have problems, you don't know the answer. And the battle is too strong for you to fight. That God can become the fighter of your battle. Did you hear what I'm saying? So tonight, I want to preach from two scriptures that has helped me in these many years to live in a continent that was full of witches and wizards, demons and power of oppression, but God, to his infinite mercy, has given me victory every day in 54 years. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. In verse 1, Paul said, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. But the Lord 
Say that with me, everybody. I didn't hear you. Remember, you are a miracle center. Say it loud. Say it louder. From the pit of your stomach. Is faithful. Now read it together like that. For the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you? Read it. And keep you. From evil. The Lord shall establish you. And keep you. From evil. Tell your neighbor. The Lord. Shall. Establish you. And keep you. From evil. Say it louder. The Lord shall establish you and keep you from me. When I watched the bullet that killed JFK in Dallas. And the mystery of up till date, how the actual story is yet unknown. With all this sophisticated equipment of the FBI and all man made bulletproof cars that exist in leadership, and saw how. Death snatched that man in the twinkle of an eye. I began to think that safety is not in any man's hand except in God's hand. Now the Bible did not say the Lord shall protect you from the snatch of the enemy in this chapter. He says so in many he says so in many chapters. In many verses of the Bible, God tells you He will protect you from falling, He will keep you from falling. But here, then He said, The Lord shall by Himself keep you from evil to be healed is good to be delivered is good but when God keep you from sickness is better Amen. to rise and walk is a miracle to be blind and see is a miracle. But not to have a broken leg is a better miracle. Not to ever be blind before you see is a better miracle. When I read this and he said, God shall keep you from evil. God shall keep you from evil. I told God, don't heal me. Help me not to be sick. Because of what God told me, that your life is now hidden in a deep vault. I will now be praying thanksgiving prayer before you come back. I will stop praying anxiety prayers. I said, why did you say so? He said, God told me the safe he has put you he has not given the spare key to anyone else.
If you hear me, let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the prayer I have for you tonight. Now the Lord who gave me that covenant will put you in a very deep safe and refuse to give the spare key to the enemy to reach your life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I read that. And I came to verse 16. Get your Bible, Dr. Ben Hinn. If I can preach to you alone, I'm okay. I've done my job. And verse 16 says, Now, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means the Lord be with you all somebody say plus me Amen. Amen. The Lord Himself, the Lord of Peace Himself, God who do not borrow peace Himself, God who does not borrow or loan peace Himself, give you peace always by all means listen to that he himself always by all means give you peace whatever it will cost God to let you have peace always by all means he will give it to you somebody hearing what I'm saying somebody may look like you you may look like someone but there are no two of you and those of you God gave assignment like me. I'm on assignment. I didn't come to this world by accident. If I came by accident, I would have died when I was thrown to garbage heap 54 years ago. But God knew why he sent me here. And he said, the Lord of peace himself shall give you peace himself that's that's the word i want you to take note of the lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means and i said god what do you mean by this and he says turn to the book You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. 
nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. your hand on the word he himself by all means always you can have peace when the choir sing you can have peace when I preach or when you hear any preacher but when God gives you rivers of peace you don't need to hear if you want joy, you can jump for it. If you want peace, you may dance for it. If you want joy, you may run for it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, if joy become if, then it will wait for if. That's a bad English. You didn't hear it. If joy become if, you want it jump. Then you jump before you get it. That's jumping joy. <laughs> but in peace from God. Samahakoko. The wonder. Listen. The God of peace. Hear that. Say that. God Himself. Let's try it again. The God of peace himself. Give you peace. Always. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The God of peace himself. Give you peace himself. Always by himself. By all means, by himself. Whatever it will cost God for you to have peace, always. Hebrew. Greek. Whatever price God is going to pay, always. For you to have peace. Always. To let you have it. To enable you do what you are called to do. By all means. He will pay that price. Without telling you. You will soon hear what I'm saying. If God says, go to Israel to preach, and the Arab nations announce war, they will keep that war till the day you finish your preaching. So you can have peace by all means. By God who owns peace. Now, in United Nations, they are trying to get peace around the world. 
But the covenant you are getting from God today is that you will have peace by all means by the God of peace himself. That is different from documented peace. That is different from ceasefire. He's talking of the peace owned by the author of peace becoming your portion. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let's turn to the book of Matthew so you can know what I'm saying. Jesus was sent by God to redeem the world. Jesus was sent by God to save the universe. But there was a man called Herod who lived when Jesus was born. And Herod said, Christ will not live to do what God sent him. And God said, Jesus will have peace by all means through me. But Herod said, no, you can't have it. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him. Go search. Find him. Bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with their sitting great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and my. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Are you listening to me? Verse 13, Ben Him. And when they were departed, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Look at me, everybody. God said, I, God, am going to hide God, my son. Brother, when God begins to hide God, I know the amen you are saying tonight. Or you are going to say a different name very soon. Herod said to himself, I am going to destroy that child so that what God said he's going to do, he wouldn't do it. But God had a better plan. He came to Joseph by dream and said, Joseph, wake up. Take your wife 
take your time flee how can God almighty tell Joseph to flee with God the son When God wake you up and say, run, don't speak. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. against me shall prosper it's true the one who told you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper is the one that asked you to flee <laughs> and obedient is better than sacrifice <laughs> don't look for extra security staff everything that God has given you hear this the devil is interested. Whether it's a gift, talent, a blessing, or any good thing that can help you to help your generation, the devil is interested. And he will want to destroy it. But God said to Joseph, don't wait and report to the police. Herod is in charge of the police department. Don't wait and tell FBI. He and they, they are one. Flee with the child and go to Egypt till I bring you words. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Why 
with God, ask Joseph. When he, God is almighty, he is almighty, he is all wise, he is all strong, he is all powerful. Why would he say, flee? When he can send umbrella and put over his head. Why will he say, flee? Hear me, hear me. Why will God say, flee? When he can blind Herod not to see the baby. Why will he say, flee? When he can bring two million angels to protect the baby. He said, Herod wants to destroy my son. But his life is too early to fight back. Run away with him. Because I want to do something that the whole world will know. I am God. Raise your right hand and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Flee! Flee! How many of you know God is powerful? How many of you know God is strong? How many of you know God is almighty? Yes. Well, sister, Susan, when God asks you to flee, don't start seven days prayer and fasting. <laughs> no idea of man can improve on God's instruction. Amen. May I repeat? Whatever good God has done, you can make it better. Can I repeat that? What God is not able to protect, no man can protect it. He's higher than the highest. He's wider than the widest. He's deeper than the deepest. He's bigger than the biggest. And here is God saying, run. Get up, brother. Run. 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 Come back. Stay there. Does that mean that God has no enough power to keep him? Answer, no. Why will he ask Joseph to flee when he's supreme God? Now let me show you how to win war without you fighting. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Benny, I never come to this pulpit for the last many years I have been coming without God giving me a special message. When God said flee with Joseph, Joseph flee with Mary and flee with Jesus, it was not because... Did I ask you to come? <laughs> Stay in Egypt! You are his wife. Follow your husband. <laughs> Run to Egypt. Come on, son. Follow them as Jesus. Baby, follow your parents. Watch me. The Bible says, Stay till I bring you work. This is a message that will help you and I to Jesus come back to do what we are called to do. I repeat, no man is wise enough to improve on God. He 
is author and finisher. He is beginning and ending. Stay in Egypt till I send you words. Man sometimes is impatient. But God is the God of peace. And he will give you peace by all means. Even if he choose to send you to Egypt, that you may have peace by all means. Always. Always. By all means. Always. By all means. Whatever price God will pay to let you have peace, he will pay it without asking for your assistance. But he asks for your obedience. Listen to verse 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Joseph did not wait till daybreak. And no man dreams in daytime unless he sleeps. That night when the angel said, move, go to Egypt, Joseph said to Mary, pack your things. We are on our way to Egypt according to the word of the Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay in Egypt. Verse 15. And was there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken of the Lord. By the prophet saying. Out of Egypt. Have I called my son. Then he can preach that better because he's from that part. Why would God send Christ to danger zone to preserve him? Pharaoh was going to kill Moses in Egypt. But when Jesus was born, God sent Jesus to Pharaoh's territory. And Pharaoh didn't know. God will give you peace by all means. Always. Now listen. I cut it short so they can come back from Egypt. <laughs> Verse 19. Read loud with me, everybody. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Stand up and shout big hallelujah. hallelujah. I say stand up and shout big hallelujah. hallelujah. Raise your right hand and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Remain standing. Begin to come from Egypt. Don't flee now. Don't run. Rise and come. Rise and come. Rise and come. 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 Are your ears open, everybody? Between the time God asked Joseph to take the young child and go to Egypt and stay till he brings them word. God who promised to give you peace by all means always by himself killed Herod so that Jesus would not be charged for murder.
He was taken as a young child. He was brought back as a young child. But God said, go. When you leave Israel, to go to Egypt. I will kill Herod. When his funeral service is over, I bring you back. <laughs> For they that sought the young child's life, are dead. Everyone who sought your death, you will not be at home when they die. That's a covenant for you today. When the war is bigger than what you can win by sword and bow and arrow and gun and matchet, God will take you away so he can fight your battle. So when your enemy die, no police will charge you for manslaughter or murder. Don't try to defend yourself. When the enemy is holding bullets and bow and arrow, before you speak in tongue, ask God, what did you say? And when he said, go to Tampa, stay there and rest. Don't come home till I ask you to return. In the Bible, the elects didn't have sword and matches they had God and any man who want to live long in the ministry should not buy too much weapons of the flesh he should hear from God did you hear what I'm saying flee to Egypt Stay there. Come back to Israel. For they that sought the young child's life are dead. Who killed him? God who told you to go. Kill him before you came back. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers,
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. And I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. 
I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days 
you'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You're supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abisho Idausa who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidu, when he called him, the plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never 
celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Agbisho. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Agbisho. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Oh, 
till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you, don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sick. Raise the dead. I said what? I beg, wait till I talk. Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl name? I will send it to the I say it's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata.
water. I command you, rise up. I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Jerry! <laughs> Look back to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, Maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand it, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there, even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just made and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, oh, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two guys, and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. Inumega tagi Jesu 
Inu mega ta, inu mega jewe, inu mega ta, ni Jesus megu wese, inu mega ta gu wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father 
of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God, the corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Aquas on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. 
president of Idaosa Ward Outreach and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bis of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supertax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin in Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attracted upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop. Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. 
Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard-working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom have bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined his, the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, 
Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.